good morning everyone on uh, behalf of progressive shares i welcome you all to q2 and h1 fy24 post on news conference call of salza electronics limited uh, please note this conference may contain forward looking statements which are based on the belief opinion and expectations of the company as of the date of this call these statements are not the guarantee of future performance and may involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict i now invite ms sabli mangle for the opening remarks to be followed by the question and answer session over to you ma'am thank you rohit good morning everyone thank you for joining us today to discuss the unaudited financial performance for the quarter half ended half year ended 30 september 2023 i have with me mr rajesh durai swami joint managing director mr p sevakumar assistant vice president marketing Menka, General Manager Accounts, Mr. Murugesh, Company Secretary, Mr. Jitin Sabakaria, Director, KC Industries, and Mr. Raman, COO of KC Industries. So now take you through the consolidated financial performance of the quarter and half ended year ended September 2023. So in the second quarter, our revenues increased to about 282.70 crores from 245.62 crores in the previous corresponding period. The overall market has been a bit slow in the second quarter as OEMs pushed back on orders. Despite this, we grew 14% to driven by industrial switchgear and wires and cable businesses. Industrial switchgear products like three-phase dry tie transformers, wire harness, relays and new products like contactors have contributed to this growth. The EBITDA excluding other income was about 27 crores in the second quarter as against It is 25.63 in the previous corresponding period, a year-on-year growth of nearly 5%. The EBITDA margin for the quarter was at 9.5%, and the profit grew nearly 5.1% to rupees 10.10 crore in Q2 FY24. Coming to our half-yearly financial performance, in the six months ended September 2023, our net revenue was rupees 569.40 crore. as against rupees 488.76 crores a year on year growth of nearly 17% driven by our businesses of industrial switchgear and wires and cables the ebitda margin excluding other income stood at rupees 52.87 crores in the first half as against 43.33 46.33 crores in h1 fy23 a year on year growth of 14% mainly on account of higher sales in high demand products like three phase dry tie transformers wire harnesses relays contactors etc the ebitda margin for the first half so that's about 9.3% a year on year decrease of 19 basis points this decline was on account of increase in um yearly increments power costs and outside processing costs the pat was at rupees 20.27 crores in h1 fy24 as against rupees 19.25 in h1 fy23 a year on year growth of about 5.3% while the margin stood at 3.6% moving to the breakup of the revenue of the different businesses starting with the industrial switchgear business this contributed to about 56.4 of the total revenues in the quarter and 55% in first half This business has grown about 9% in Q2 and about 20% in H1 FY24. So the margin in this business was about 11% in Q2 and about 11.3% in H1 FY24. Our three-phase dry tie transformer product grew about 96% year on year in Q2 and nearly 122% in H1 FY24, while wires and cable wire harness business product grew 12.2% year on year. and nearly 49% in H1 FY24 these two high demand products continue to grow at a faster and a higher rate coming to the wires and cables business this contributed to about 37.5% of our revenues in the quarter and about 39.1 in H1 FY24 there is an increase of about 22% year on year in this division during the quarter and nearly 17% in H1 FY24 with the ebitda margin being about 7% in Q2 and 6.7 in H1. The building products business contributed to about 6.1% to our revenues in the quarter and 5.7 in the half year. This business is the only B2C business that we have as 
where we sell many elect- electrical products for the building sector. We expect the growth trend to improve in the coming quarter, which will help us increase our contribution from this segment. On the exports front, we continue to see steady growth, mainly due to higher sales in North and South America, Middle East, Africa, Europe, and Asia. Exports to the Americas grew 105% year-on-year, Middle East and Africa about 89%, Asian countries about 31% year-on-year, while Europe grew nearly 50% during the quarter. For the quarter, our export share was nearly 35%. The growth from exports was about 53% year-on-year and 42% sequentially. For the half year, the export share was about 29%. And export uh, grew 46% year on year during the half year. Thank you. I would now like to hand over to Rajesh to take us through the business development and the road ahead. Thank you, Savli. Uh, wish you all a very warm welcome to South Electronics Limited earnings conference call for the second quarter and half year ended 30 September 2023. Thank you all for uh, taking time to join us today. Uh, we have shared our results update presentation and media release. I hope you all must have received it and gone through the same. Uh, I would like to share a few recent developments and also the outlook for the future. In general, the market outlook, I think we all know that due to the geopolitical unpredictability, there are supply chain interruptions and increased uh, regulatory scrutiny that's happening. Because of all this, the electronic market has experienced a number of difficulties in recently. However, the market has some tailwinds, including growing demand in India, particularly continued technical breakthroughs across the world and expanding investments in infra, automation, and dig- digitalization. At Salzer, we are committed to responding quickly to these altering conditions and adopting a proactive strategy to guide the company towards expansion and growth. The global wire and cable market size was estimated at US dollar 200 billion in the year 2022 and is projected to grow at a CAGR of 4% until 2030. Rising urbanization and growing infrastructures worldwide are some of the major factors driving this market. Implementation of smart grid technology has met increasing need for grid interconnections thus resulting in a rising investment in this sector. With economic and infrastructure development, India's generation and consumption of power and electricity is steadily rising. Particularly, India's power sector is one of the most diversified in the world sources of power generation, ranging from traditional sources like coal, natural gas, oil, hydro, and nuclear, coming to renewable, non-conventional sources such as wind and solar. Switch gears are applicable and used across all types of production and delivery of electricity to end users. Furthermore, the demand for infrastructure is growing year on year as population grows and urbanization increases. There is a growing demand for infrastructure projects such as roads, bridges and buildings. The government's focus on smart city development, digitization is also increasing the demand for all electrical products. We at Salzer expect to capitalize on all these opportunities. Some of the key developments on the business in this quarter. In this quarter, we have seen growth coming in from our industrial switchgear at 10% and wire and cable business at 22%. Our products like three-phase transformers and wire harness, as already Savli said, both witnessed very high growth as expected. Other legacy products like relays and new products like contactors also grew at around 20% each. However, in this quarter, some of the high margin products like rotary switches, isolators, cable ducts declined in sales, which is also one of the reasons for the EBITDA margin not growing as expected. On the input material cost, the material cost has remained mostly stable in this quarter, except for silver prices, which has been increasing. However, all other costs like the power and fuel, subcontracting, freight costs, have increased in this year. We are focusing on maintaining a balanced business mix between the switchgear, wire and cable products to manage the overall gross margin percentage. On the electric vehicle front, as we all know that we forayed into 
uh, EV charger manufacturing business through a joint venture with an Austrian company. Our company is gearing up for the booming EV, EV charging market. Our product, DC fast charger, is suitable for various types of brands of cars. This charger is undergoing testing at AREA in Pune, and we are expecting to launch this product in Q4 of FY24. We believe that this EV charge and manufacturing business has the potential to be a game changer. While it may take some time to establish a customer base and also create a charging network by ourselves, the company definitely aims to play a significant role in the Indian market where the demand for the EV charging infrastructure is expected to grow significantly. On the other front, our recently developed new products for the new segment, heating and ventilation and air conditioning segment, products like contactors, disconnect switches and whips. These products are being used both in domestic and industrial, domestic and industrial AC systems in India as well as in the international market. Because of this, we expect our sales to Europe and USA to increase over the coming quarters. With respect to our subsidiary, KC Industries Limited is concerned, the sales have been growing consistently and EBITDA margins are also improving consistently. KC's top line grew 14% year on year to 11.7 crores in Q2 FY24. EBITDA grew 32% year on year to 1.52 crore in Q2 FY24 from 1.1 crore. PAT margins were at 8.5% 8 this quarter an improvement of almost one percentage point over the previous year Q2. We expect KC to continue to do a similar growth uh, in the coming quarters. The markets are becoming challenging and is also slowing down a little bit. We are heading into the second half of this fiscal with a comprehensive product portfolio encompassing numerous sub-products and collaborations. Our long-term relationship with leading global players such as Schneider, Eaton, Honeywell, AVB, etc. will help us remain stable during tough times. For us, we see this headwinds as temporary and our expansion into EV charging and renewable sectors coupled with strategic diversification into HVAC sector sets the stage for an exciting journey ahead in the next two to four quarters. I thank the entire Salsa Electronics, uh, entire team at Salsa Electronics for their untiring efforts and all our stakeholders for their continued support and faith in our company. This is all from our side now. I would like to thank you all very much for your time and attention and all, I wish you all a very, very happy Diwali. We can now take questions. Thank you very much. We'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Sri Ram, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, in the last call, you had mentioned that the enameled uh, copper wires uh, would be about 40 crores. Uh, so, can you just give some breakup on the wires and cable segment? Uh, to, you know, what are the other components? And also, similarly, on the industrial 60s side, how much would be the transformers and the cam operated uh, switches? Um, on on the on the wire and cable, the enamel copper wire last quarter contributed 33 crores. Uh, the the rest uh, close to around uh, 70 crores is from the PVC insulated uh, wire and cable. That's the breakup for wire and cable. On the industrial switch here, I don't have the breakup product wise, uh, but the 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 top contributors are the toroidal transformers, rotary switches, three phase transformers, and wire harness. These are the top top four uh, contributors for the switchgear segment uh, where we did uh, close to 306 crores uh, for the first half. So, uh, so those three would be about 80%? Some rough number? Some rough 60, 65%. Okay. 
And so the, uh, the wires and cables, you mentioned that the balance is basically PVC insulated cables and wires, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and the wire harness, uh, uh, how much would it be for the quarter? And so where do you report the wire harness? Is it in the wires and cables or in the industry? No, it will be in the, in the switch gears. Wire harness will be in the switch gears. And so uh, what is the number for the quarter, sir? I don't have the individual product breakup figures. Uh, but okay. I can share it with you uh, through through our uh, uh, team. Okay. And so uh, again on the wire harness side, uh, you know, what is the traction between the team? Uh, if you can provide some color on that, uh, what is what is our capacity utilization at the moment? Actually, capacity for wire harness is uh, is is very dynamic for us uh, right now. I think uh, the capacity that we have created, we can we can produce. Uh, up to around 100, 150 crores of uh, uh, annual business. Uh, this year we expect to close. Last year we we closed wire harness business at around 70 crores. So this year we expect this to close at around 100, 100 plus crores. Uh, we also recently expanded in Nozur for wire harness also particularly. So here the capacity is quite dynamic and there is not much capex required to to expand uh, the capacity in wire harness. So, what will be the current utilization of the new client side? So Sorry for the interruption, Shriram. Can you please switch to the handset? Your voice is oh. not audible. No, I was just asking, what is the current... Around 70% utilization, we're doing. 70%. For the new plant, right? Yeah. No, no new plant is still starting up. It's around 30-40% utilization. But overall capacity, we are at 70%. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, sir, and happy Diwali. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Santil Kumar from Zoinder Capital Services Limited. Please go ahead. Sir, uh, good morning, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Santil, uh, sir, can you please switch to the handset? Your voice is very low. Is it audible now? Little better, sir. Okay. Uh, sir, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question on the marketing arrangement with the LNP, you know, how it is progressing. Uh, because you know, LNP is supporting a strong uh, growth in the order book. So, can we expect any growth, uh, significant growth opportunity from this? Uh, no, I, I didn't fully, fully understand your question. You're asking about the arrangement of marketing with LNT? Yes, sir. I think the, the LNT is, is marketing our rotary switches and wires and cables. That's what they're doing, and uh, the arrangement still continues to, to go, and uh, they continue to market our products across India. Um, is it only the marketing arrangement? Sorry for the interruption. Sandil Kumar, sir, your voice is not audible. Can you switch to handset, please? I'm using the handset. No. Uh, so there is a lot of background the... noise, so we are not hearing you properly. Yeah. One second. Is it better now? Yeah. Go ahead, sir. Uh, is it only the marketing arrangement or do we supply for the capsule focus also, sir? Because no, no we, we do supply for their captive purpose, but that's two different business. But our our supply to, for their captive purpose is is very small for L and T. The majority of the business that we do is so marketing only. Oh. Uh, okay. And my second question, you know, in our open remarks, you said like the fastest are there, uh, the distribution network. We will set up our distribution network on our own, right? For distribution network for. Uh, fast charges, setting up of fast charges. Yeah, yeah, we will have we will have to go and find the market. We have to go and sell to the consumer customers. Uh, so, do you have any idea to uh, you know, enter into a joint venture or third party supply for the product? No, I think it's too early for us to to work on that uh, as of now. What I think once the fast charge is ready, we have some ready-made market as of now, and we will start doing that first, and then we will see how to grow our uh, business in that area. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manu Jindal, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. I uh, uh, have a couple of questions. In the sir, your okay. voice is not very clear. Uh, what is your use? Just wait. Is it better now? Yeah, it's better now, yeah. Yeah. So just wanted to know that in terms of industrial switchgears, 
in the last call also you mentioned that you have arrangements with uh, where you sell your products to Schneider and uh, Honeywell these type of companies so just wanted to know like uh like in terms of other competitors do you have some technical capabilities technical advantages that these big players are taking you know these players are procuring uh switch gears from you or is it just like a distribution or distrib- what are the competencies that make these giants procure from you just wanted to have a little view on that piece uh sir i think this we have been we have been telling this in in uh, many of our calls in our earlier calls maybe you have not followed it our earlier calls i think uh, we we have all the technical capabilities uh required to manufacture various electrical electromechanical electronic components and that's the reason that all these uh, multinationals have come to us and s- stuck to us for a very long term uh, i think some of the relationship exceeds 20 years uh, is because of the technical competency that we have in in manufacturing in designing and manufacturing engineering products Uh, definitely i think we have much better competencies than than many of our uh, competitors and so one more question in terms of copper copper segment uh, again there is a risk of uh, uh, china dumping so just wanted to know like if it ever happens so how do we plan to take them uh, if there is a, ever a uh chance of china dumping the wire uh, wiring into india I just wanted to have a little purview on the thing uh, i think in wire and cable industry uh, i don't think there is any threat from china for india because india itself <coughs> is having many many large wire and cable players uh, who are mm-hmm. who are quite capable of competing internationally uh, and also i think there is enough uh, restrictions Uh, for the wire and cable industry uh, for the imports to come in because there are mandatory ba certifications you need mandatory standards that you have to meet if you have to sell in india so i i don't foresee uh, any chinese threat as such uh, dumping of chinese products in india in the wire and cable nor the switch gear uh, products and apart from that i think the chinese also is no more uh, very uh, cheap i think they also have become quite Uh, expensive or as ex- expensive as uh, the indian products uh, are so i don't foresee any any chinese dumping threat on any of the sectors that we are in okay thank you sir thanks for the question and thanks for the answer thank you the next question is from the line of deepak pudda from sapphire capital please go ahead hello am i audible sir yes sir yes sir perfect Yes sir. Okay yeah um, thank you very much uh, sir for the opportunity so so i have a few questions uh, now first up i mean in terms of ev charge i think we were in the testing mode uh, and we were expecting some revenue to start so 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 sir, any 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 kind of light you can throw on on that front that how's the testing gone and and uh, um, how do we see it going forward uh actually this uh, testing is a is a little bit long drawn process so it is underway we have done some preliminary tests and uh, it has cleared very well and and uh, we expect there should not be any issue in clearing the standards that is required uh, by the indian government so we expect this testing to be completed by by end of this month or or beginning of december and we see the revenues uh, started coming in from q4 of fy24 as i mentioned in my uh, earnings call speech so q4 okay. fy24 uh, is definitely uh, a period where we will start uh, earning revenues from the chargers and and do we have to i mean what what's the certification we get here i mean uh, in terms of uh, and and uh, is it eligible for export be a standard for chargers Uh-huh. so you have to test these charges as per the bs standard in the in there are two or three labs that are uh, certified to test this mm-hmm. one is the automotive research uh, institute uh, in pune so we have we have chosen that to test this so there is another uh, research institute in chennai to do such uh, testing so we will get a certificate from arei uh, saying that these charges are uh, as per the bs standard 
ओके 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 अंडरस्टैंड फेयर एनफ एंड एंड आई थिंक इन द ईवी सेगमेंट नेक्स्ट ईयर वी आर टारगेटिंग सम 100 क्रोर्स काइंड ऑफ अ रेवेन्यू इन 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 अर्लीयर आई थिंक आई वुड लाइक टू क्लेरिफाई आई डिडंट आई डिडंट मेंशन दैट इट इज नेक्स्ट ईयर आवर एम इज टू गेट टू दैट लेवल बट होपफुली यस इफ एवरीथिंग गोस वेल बिकॉज़ दिस मार्केट इज स्टिल इवॉल्विंग बिकॉज़ देयर आर नो रेडीमेड कस्टमर्स फॉर इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल फास्ट चार्जर्स एज ऑफ टुडे बिकॉज़ दिस चार्जर्स आर एक्सपेंसिव सो पीपल एट होम won't be able to buy and install this and there is no necessity for them to buy such an expensive charger for home mm-hmm. so this is mostly public charging and okay. public charging market is still evolving there are tenders coming from the government there are there are different methods of uh, installing the chargers in the public so the, as the market is evolving like this so it's it's very difficult to really estimate uh, a revenue uh, in in the next one one or one and a half years but but for sure i think there is there is a lot of uh, emphasis on creating an ev charging infrastructure across the country mm-hmm. but there will be different methods to do that so we we are we are exploring all possible ways to to get into uh, the, the the market and see how we can uh, earn out of this correct and and what can be the steady state margin in this business uh, i mean uh, at a steady state once it evolves maybe what sort of minimum or threshold margin we do expect to clock in ev charge uh, i think anywhere between 16 20% of uh, ebitda margins in this product a fair enough i got it and uh, i was reading a press release so uh, you, you and and your opening speech as well you said you are seeing a positive trend in terms of increasing your raw material cost right which will help your uh, help improve your margins so i mean so so i mean we were of the view that 4% margin is what we are we are looking at for fi 24 so so do do we stick to that or is there any change to that or any upside risk for this year or next year so any any thought mm, no i think we will uh, we will definitely be close to 4% uh, packed uh, for fi 24 i don't see a, a a downside risk definitely from here uh, mm-hmm. because the input costs are definitely stabilizing um, uh, unless otherwise uh, there is Uh, what do you call uh, any black swan event like like you know po- geopolitically something very bad happens mm-hmm. uh, then we may get stuck somewhere Un- until i mean un- unless otherwise i think uh, we are good as of now and uh, we see that whatever we committed of uh, close to 4% back margins is achievable okay and, and this reduction in raw material are we are able to absorb ourselves i mean in our company or we have to pass on uh, i mean the um, i think in the wire and cable it is it's passing on as i have mentioned earlier but industrial switch gears we normally don't uh, pass on because that's that's only an annual rate contracts that we do or annual price increases we do yes i understand and my final uh, question is um, i think you also mentioned that because of the uh, global uncertainty there has been bit of a slow down right so yes. w- what it mean for growth for us i mean whatever we have been targeting i mean what 20 25% growth right so 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 do we yeah like like we definitely expected a 20 to 22 20% 20 22% growth this year but uh, unfortunately i think we have ended up for this half year at around 16 16% correct, correct. Uh, we hope that the q3 second half of q3 and q4 may might be better uh, if if everything goes well Uh, because uh, we, we are not seeing any change from q2 to q3 as of now i think almost one month is over we are still seeing uh, slowness in the market in slowness i mean we are not getting the growth that we expect to get we are still growing but at a, at a at a slower rate uh, i would say uh, there's not not just the, the you mean international uh, uncertainties but also domestically there are elections across as uh, the various reasons people cite the money is tight inflation is high so there are different reasons that the the projects are slowing down or pushing out pushed out oems are pushing out on 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 their uh, forecasts so these are the things that's happening as of now uh, but but we see it as temporary uh, definitely i think uh, in in q4 uh, things should start picking up and uh, we look at at least at least a 20% Uh, 18 20% growth for this financial year so maybe we should uh, tone it down by around 4 5% compared to what we expected during the start of this fiscal uh understand that's very helpful sir i mean all the very best to you that's it from my side thank you thank you thank you sir. thank you ladies and gentlemen you may press star and want to ask a question
द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ खुशबू गांधी फ्रॉम शेयर इंडिया प्लीज गो एड गुड मॉर्निंग सर थैंक यू फॉर गिविंग मी द अपॉर्चुनिटी सो फ्यू ऑफ माई क्वेश्चन आई बिन आंसर आई कम डिरेक्टली टू द टू द फ्यू क्वेश्चन विच आई आर स्टिल पेंडिंग सो द फर्स्ट वन इज ऑन द ईवी चार्जिंग स्टेशन सो यू सेट दैट वी वी आर एक्चुअली लुकिंग फॉर द रेवेन्यू फ्रॉम द ईवी चार्जिंग स्टेशन फ्रॉम क्यू फोर सो वॉट इज द मार्केट आर वी लुकिंग इन द डोमेस्टिक फ्रंट और इन द एक्सपोर्ट साइट वेर वी आर लुकिंग and secondly what is the capacity over there are we uh, do we need any capex for the for the expansion of the ev charging station uh, setup or we we have the setup already done at our plant uh ma'am ev charger we are looking at both domestic as well as export export back to our collaborators domestic to various customers is what we are looking at uh, the capacity as of now i think we can produce close to around 70 to 100 charges uh, a month Uh, we already have capacity but definitely we need some more capex but uh, since it's a joint venture our our share of investment will not be very much high i think we expect the investment to be between 4 and 5 crores uh, in the next two or three quarters uh, that's that's what we expect to invest into that uh, company um, on the domestic front as you said uh, as i already said there are no ready made customers for for the charges as of now Uh, except a couple of them who are doing the charging service uh, across the country we are also looking at creating a charging uh, network ourselves uh, but then that's again uh, one year down the line uh, we have to see how we can finance uh, that uh, venture so this this is an evolving market uh, but we see good potential in this uh, business okay but uh, sir on the export front already a lot of uh, regions are uh, well set up for the evs so do we have any orders or have we talked with uh, any of the clients over there and we are looking for the orders uh, in a great number going forward or for, uh, post the uh, certification only we will be looking to that no i think we we already have, have started discussion with our collaborator to to sell to build charges for them uh here yeah, that discussion is already started so it's it's uh, it's in the final stages and we should be able to start uh, by by q4 for them okay and uh, so one more question on the investors which we have front so since we are facing some slow down right now uh for the current year we have already uh, lowered our growth rate of uh, to 18 to 20% but how do we see fi 25 uh, can we get uh, are we expecting the same growth uh, going forward and with the same margins or there will be a uh, decline in the margin since still the raw material prices have not stable down no raw material prices have stabilized and have also gone down uh, we expect uh, the, uh, definitely in the long term we are very very positive on 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 the growth Uh, for the country as well as for for our country for for our company uh, so maybe this year i think it's it's a temporary uh, i wouldn't call it slow down i think reduced growth uh, is what i would call uh, which is which in my opinion is temporary and will definitely turn around once uh, things are stabilized internationally as well as uh, in the country okay and do we uh, still continue to maintain uh, domestic and export in the re- same ratio or will be focusing more on export front going forward um fortunately for us i think the exports have grown grown well uh, in this uh, quarter i think this this quarter our uh, export share has gone up to around 28% uh, com- compared to what it was uh, for the last year at 25 26% so we we see that you know end of this year our export share will be at 30% of our revenue which will be at least 4 5% higher than what we did last year fortunately the export market is growing well because of of the new product additions that we have done uh, in 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 the last uh, two quarters uh, so uh, do we enjoy better margins at the export market so because of that uh, uh, we'll be looking at better improvement in the margins Nor- normally yes i think export margins are little better but uh, in in this last two quarters because of the introduction of the new product uh, there have been some additional costs that we had to incur due to various uh, reasons and that's why we see a lower margin uh, we have not recovered at actual uh, price that we have to recover from the export margin because of the new product introduction so which will stabilize 
going forward in Q3, Q4. Okay, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pranay Gandhi from Green Portfolio. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, sir. So I just have one question in regards to the contractor segue. Uh, previously, it was mentioned that it has a revenue potential of upwards of twenty million dollars over the next five years. So how are we faring on that? And if you could shed some light on the uh, current volume and the absolute revenue where we are. Uh, I think the potential still remains open and uh, available for us uh, from the North American market for these this HVAC products. Uh, end of this year, I think we will end up uh, maybe close to around two two and a half million uh, US dollars revenue for this product. And we are still stuck with one particular customer because the product has been newly launched, introduced. Uh, we are working with various other customers, both in US and Europe and also in the Indian market. So by FY25, I think we see uh, this business doubling or even tripling um, for FY25. So the potential, as I mentioned, of growing to around $20 million in the HVAC segment is quite uh, possible in the next two years. Thank you so much, sir, and good luck. And wishing you a very happy and safe Diwali. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Neha Jain, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, hi, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I would uh, like to, sir, understand uh, the 42% growth in exports that we have. So, what factors have contributed and which markets have majorly grown in this segment? Um, I would I would consider half year as a better uh, performance instead of quarter. So I'll talk about okay. the half year growth. Uh, half year growth, I think the uh, U.S. market has doubled compared to what it was uh, in the last year first half. The main reason is, as I mentioned, this the new product introductions uh, and the new customer introductions have, have increased this has made this growth possible. And in Europe also similarly, I think uh, the the market also has been good for us. And, and again, uh, European market also, this new product and new customers have increased and grown at 40%. So I think across the market, even the Middle East and Af African market also have, have grown, though it is the, the overall value is small, but it is still grown by around 50%. So our major market as of now is North America and Europe contributing, uh, I would say, close to 60-65% of our overall exports. So, so basically, uh, uh, we are not impacted by any geopolitical crisis or inflation or anything as such? Uh, no. I think so far, uh, the markets are, have been a little slow in, in the Far East and Europe, but I, I don't think it is because of any, any geopolitical reasons. Uh, we, we, have, we, have not, we are not seeing any major impact because of that so far. Okay, okay, sir. And so one more question. Uh, that's regarding the recent patents uh, that we have received. Um, so, uh, like, what kind of market demand do we see for that? Like the MPCB and rotary switches? MPCB so what kind is, of demand? Uh, a, MPCB is a product that is used both domestically and, and internationally for, for motor production. Uh, it's a large market, but at the same time, it is also be well, there are also large players that operate in this market, like like our customers like Schneider, ABB, Siemens. All the large players operate in this market. So it, it's a very uh, challenging, tough market. Uh, we are we are trying to do our best. Though we got a patent, it's a different technology uh, than what others are doing. That is why we applied for a patent and got it. But that alone will not uh, give us an edge in the market. So we are trying our best and uh, we are not able to really predict a, a, a revenue potential for this product uh, as of now. Okay, okay. Oh, got it. Thank you so much and good luck. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Viral Jain, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good afternoon, sir. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, 
So I was looking at the numbers. Uh, I wanted to know what is the main reason for the rise in short-term borrowing for the company. Um, I think uh, one of the reason is I think our uh, receivables have gone up uh, by I would say by around 10, 12 days compared to what it was in in March. Uh, we have ma- managed to maintain our inventory, but receivables have gone up. I think that's one of the reason that uh, the uh, the short-term borrowings have gone up by around 15 crores compared to uh, June. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, I also wanted to ask, uh, so I noticed a substantial increase in the current tax liabilities. So what does it exactly constitute? Okay, that's a uh, question the balance sheet. I will have to really take a look to before answering you. Yeah. Um, I don't see it's gone up substantially. I think it is, you're comparing it with which year, sir? Yeah, this uh, half year. No, this half year too. Yeah. Last half year. Yeah. Uh, last half year we didn't provide for current tax uh, liability, but we are. This is normal income tax liability that we are providing for. Okay, sir. That's it from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next question is on the line of. Nihar Mehta, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi. So, recently I've noted in the uh, financial statements that the interest cost and operating costs have increased uh, year-on-year basis. So, could you highlight what are the main reasons of this increment in the operating cost and interest? So, the interest cost increase is mainly because there are two reasons. One, I think as as I just mentioned, our utilization has gone up by around 10 to 15 crores. Okay. Secondly, the rate of interest also has, has recently gone up compared to what it was in the last year. I think the rate of interest have gone up by close to 0.5, 0. 0.75% uh, because because of the, uh, the uh, RBA uh, rate revisions. So, that has impacted on the finance cost one. On the operating cost, as again I mentioned in in the con call, the the power and fuel has gone up. The the subcontracting charges and the freight costs have increased. Uh, main reason is because of the uh, the inflation prevailing in the in the market. Okay, okay, sir. Uh, all right, sir. Um, th- there is one last thing. Also, the employee expenses. Uh, have also grew like somewhere around 14 15 percent uh, so uh, have you have you hired any additional uh, human capital in the business yeah i think because of the expansion that we have done in nozur i think we have hired new new employees so that 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 cost that has impacted the increase in employee cost and also for the annual increments that we do uh, close to around you know 7 to 10 percent uh, that has increased. All right, all right. Thank you for those insights, sir, and uh, wish you the very best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Arora, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks for yes, the good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. The revenue from uh, wires and cable divisions have uh, increased YOI, but uh, declined, I think, quarter on quarter. So, is this basically due to the seasonal nature of this line of business? Yes, sir. You're right. Okay. Right. And, and Q3, we expect also to be good. And uh, so, let's let's hope for the best. Are there any uh, EBITDA margin guidelines which you can give for switchgear division and building product division? Like, it has decreased YOI, but any future guidance if you can throw some light? Um, a bit of margin for the industry switch here, I think for the half year is we are at around 11.11.5 percent. We we expect this to to grow, definitely grow by at least half percentage point in the next two quarters. And the wire and cable will remain stable at around seven percent. Okay. And so one last thing, uh, are we looking any doing any CSR activities or any community engagement programs that we are involved in? Yes, definitely we are doing it. I think the details of which are updated on the website. Okay, okay. 
थैंक यू सो मच सर थैंक यू फॉर द इंसाइट थैंक यू सर थैंक यू a reminder to all the participants you may press star and one to ask a question the next question is from the line of manu jindal an individual investor please go ahead <coughs> Sir, this the question which I earlier uh, forgot to ask. It was about the in the earlier con call you mentioned about improving the return on capital employed by working upon the receivables and in the inventory positions. While receivables in this while things quarter was more or less stable only, receivables increased by say nine to ten percent, and this has been the trend. Which has been going on for say three to four quarters. Just wanted wanted to know about how do we plan to you know optimize the receivables to improve our ROCI. So can you just help us out in shedding the light here? So this is a constant work in progress. Yes, our commitment to get to around eighteen percent ROCE is is definitely there. Uh, mm-hmm. The biggest challenge is to bring the inventories down. I think that's that's where the biggest challenge remains. Uh, or or turn around the inventories much more. So until we do either of this, uh, I think uh, it, it is going to be challenging for for us. Uh, the another reason also for for uh, the the working capital days to reduce now, uh, I mean at least be stable even though our receivables increase is that we have reduced our payable days uh, significantly compared to March by around 10 days. so that's also another reason that you know our cash flows are are strained uh there are various reasons for that uh, but as as you have asked i think this is a constant work in progress we continuously work to to bring down our inventory and receivables uh, to uh, to the acceptable levels sure sure thank you sir thank you The next question is from the line of Rohit Ori from Progressive Shares. Please go ahead. Uh, hi Rajesh ji, few questions from my end. Uh, the first one is related to to uh, our customer. Uh, some of our customers are doing really well. Uh, well, if you look at uh, Schneider also, uh, they are doing aggressively uh, uh, expanding their uh, operations as well as uh, looking at certain solar panel kind of business expansion. So do you think that Salzer can play a role in this, and uh, do you think that we can uh, uh, be a part of their growth journey as well? Uh, yes, I think whatever Schneider does within India or globally, it is definitely going to benefit us. If if there is uh, an opportunity for us, I think we will be the first one for them to to get in touch with us as a preferred supplier. Uh, but overall, I think this quarter Schneider also has been a little slow. Mm-hmm. uh for information i think as i think you mentioned schneider is expanding uh at a bit, at a faster pace in india i think they are investing a large sum to set up their own facility and moving all their uh, factories to one one location i think that's something that that they are doing that that's consolidation of their manufacturing uh apart from that whatever growth schneider has definitely we will be uh, able to get a part of that growth So, if they work for uh, the solar panel business, uh, then do you think Salzer will be able to cater to that uh, demand, or how quickly will be able to adapt to that uh, requirement from the other end? Uh, because th- there are teams from Schneider and Salzer working constantly on new product development. Okay. Uh, so it is not that you know suddenly they come up and ask for something. So it's it's a it's a long term plan. We constantly work with them. There are always new projects that is that is going on. and and that is one of the reason that we keep coming up with with uh, new products uh, at least once in every 6 months or something or at least a differentiation or some some addition of uh, products in the in the existing range this happens because of the continuous constant working with the oems okay uh so we were working on uh, some approvals from uh, russia and we were exploring opportunities 
And in uh, in the previous calls, you said that you were looking at uh, probably Q3 uh, where you would be supplying. So is there any delay or uh, is the plan going as per uh, the schedule? The plan is going as per as per plan. I think it is. We we will start seeing revenues from Q3 this year. And any any number initial numbers that you have to put. Um, initial numbers are not going to be much much high. I think we are just starting to uh, enter into this market. Uh, so initial numbers are, are not not very 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 large. Okay. Okay. So there are certain uh, uh, players in the market related to EV chargers, and they are looking at coming for IPO. So my question was that is there any difference in terms of the technology that they have? And uh, the technology which we probably have developed, and we are up and running for that. Do you think that uh, do we have any edge over their technology? More or less, I think uh, the EV charging technology, or all of all of the charger manufacturers, will have almost very similar. Uh, but there are there is a difference between a slow charger and a fast charger. Uh, but uh, there are not many fast charger manufacturers in India. I think there are only a few of them, two or three. Uh, fast charger manufacturers apart from us. So the companies that are coming for IPO, I think, are mostly the service providers, the companies that who are uh, buying chargers and installing it and doing service, uh, charging services. Okay. That, that's what I, I believe. Uh, okay. So my last question is uh, that uh, there are many players who are looking at certain tie-up with Tata Powers for example, Bishon is trying uh, for one such uh, tie-up to install EV chargers. So, do you think that Salzer will also be requiring uh, to build up this kind of a capability or supply chain, or are you still working or already working on this kind of a business? We we are working with, we're trying to discuss with various uh, partners to to mm-hmm. see how we can deploy our chargers. So, the discussion is going on uh, with with various uh, partners uh, for doing this. We need to have some some kind of a tie-up with companies like that. Okay, okay. So thank you for answering my questions. Uh, wish you a very happy Diwali, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Rohit. Wish you happy Diwali. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Rajesh Doreswami for closing comments. Once again, thank you all for your time and consideration and support. Uh, I, I wish you all a very, very happy Diwali, happy holidays, and until I see you next time, goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. On behalf of Salzer Electronics, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.